So I have a little bit of an inside story for you guys today. I heard that the Democrats might be trying to investigate the president for crimes. I know, right? Crazy. Unless, of course, you've turned on literally any electronic in the last year. Even my toaster is reporting it at this point. So why am I talking about this on a Supreme Court Saturday? Didn't they already do an episode about special counsels? Well, I did, but this is different. Because apparently, some people want to get the president in trouble for colluding with Russia, or obstructing justice, or violating campaign funding laws. Which, okay, you're going to throw out the president for violating campaign finance laws? Yeah, I wouldn't hold my breath for that one. Before I go into the Constitution, I just want to contextualize my skepticism a little bit and answer a question. But what if it had been the Democrats? Well, in 2012 we saw... Multiple reports this morning say former presidential candidate John Edwards will face federal charges for campaign finance violations. Edwards could be indicted in the next two weeks for allegedly using campaign funds to hide the identity of his mistress. Man, do politicians suck. I hate how good an example I could find. Anyways, spoiler alert, he wasn't found guilty of violating campaign finance laws by taking a million dollars. Wow! Trump managed to art the deal that down to $130,000 of illegal campaign finance money and using it to silence his mistress. He argued that the money was to hide the affair from his wife, who would soon be dead of cancer, instead of hiding it from the voters. And the prosecution couldn't prove otherwise beyond a reasonable doubt. Alright, great. Now back to the story at hand. So you want to get Trump in trouble for, well, Let's just say crime. Well, it's being treated as though, if you find a magical piece of evidence, that will immediately collapse the executive branch. But it turns out that prosecuting the president might be kinda hard. It's being reported like picking your hiking boots is the hard part of summiting Mount Everest. Today we're going to answer the questions, can the president be brought up on criminal charges? Can the president be brought up on civil charges? And what are the methods of impeachment? So first, can the president be brought up on criminal charges? Short answer, no. All right, moving on. Nah, let's get into it, despite the fact that it feels good to finally have a decisive answer on something on a Supreme Court Saturday. First, could you imagine if, say, our sitting president was making executive orders from Rikers Island? I mean, we might finally get comprehensive prison reform, but I think the meetings with foreign leaders would be a little awkward if they had to be 15 minutes between phones and separated by glass. Things that might not be great for foreign relations. Anyways, yeah, you can't convict a sitting president, and the Constitution is very specific about this, saying, Judgment in cases of impeachment shall not extend further than to removal of office, and disqualification to hold and enjoy any office of honor, trust, or profit under the United States. But the party convicted shall nevertheless be liable and subject to indictment, trial, judgment, and punishment according to the law. Alright, so what does any of that mean? Well, it sets up a very specific order of how to punish a president for crimes. First, impeachment, then conviction, then removal from office, and then indictment, and then trial, and then judgment, and then punishment. So yeah, if we're going to go that route, we might want to pick up the pace or else it might be the term limit that ends up kicking him out of office first. Alright, so question number two. Can the president be brought up in civil court? Well, interestingly enough, in this case it's a little more complicated. Because the answer is, sometimes. The porn star continuing to plague the presidency, Stormy Daniels, also known as Stephanie Clifford, going after President Trump personally in a brand new lawsuit, the defamation claim filed just this afternoon. Yeah, so all those lawsuits you hear being filed against President Trump fall under this category. So great, we can't kick out the president, but we can certainly troll him and waste everyone's time in the process. So what is a civil suit? Well, it's a case where a person says another person has not carried out their duties or made compensation for harm done, and seeks to have the court mandate either compensation or action. Now, the legal idea of suing a president in a civil case has come up in two separate Supreme Court cases, 
regarding two of America's most ethical presidents in Nixon vs. Fitzgerald and Clinton vs. Jones. So first, let's head back to 1982 to look at Nixon vs. Fitzgerald. Did you hear about this new weather channel that just debuted? Yeah, if I wanted to watch the weather, I'd open up a window. We can expect to see that channel fail pretty soon. Anyways, a man is trying to file a civil lawsuit against ex-president Richard Nixon and it's gone to the Supreme Court. Man, that guy is so corrupt it's been 8 years since he resigned and he's still being sued for what he did. In 1968, the plaintiff was a civilian analyst working for the United States Air Force and in a high profile testimony to Congress, he talked about inefficiencies and cost overruns. Unfortunately, Nixon fixed those cost overruns by firing him, an action that the Civil Service Commission deemed unjust. This led him to sue, although because nothing on this show can be simple, he first had to sue to sue, because nobody was sure if he had the right to bring an ex-president to court. Unfortunately for him, according to a decision released by the Supreme Court, Petitioner, as a former president of the United States, is entitled to absolute immunity from damages liability predicated on his official acts. Wow, that is pretty unambiguous. So you can't take the president to court for things he's done as president. Don't worry though, we just had 4 years of Carter, a man whose biggest scandal was not going to war with Iran. So I'm sure we can continue to count on our leaders. Something is telling me that the editor wants me to pass you guys off to 1997 now, so bon voyage. Paula Corbin Jones, age 27, now married, claims that in 1991 when she was single and working for the state of Arkansas, then Governor Bill Clinton sexually harassed her in a vulgar manner. Because she's now filed a public civil suit against the president, she's become the hero, some would charge pawn, of many of Mr. Clinton's longtime political opponents. Another sex scandal! What is with our politicians in cheating on their wives? It's the one thing that can get bipartisan support. Now, in this case, Paula Jones suffered from sexual harassment under then Governor Clinton. And when she rejected him, she was punished by her superiors, resulting in her filing suit against now President Clinton. Now, the district court dismissed the case, citing Clinton's plea of presidential immunity, as one does. Although, it's never a good sign when your best defense against accusations of abhorrent sexual harassment is, hey, I'm the president now. In the end, though, the Supreme Court said that you can file civil suit against a president if it's related to his non-official actions. Back to 2017 with this report. Trump University class action lawsuit. Now, Mr. Trump has been under fire for the scandal throughout his campaign. Trump University, a real estate training program, stands accused of scamming millions of dollars from its students. Some people say, well, aren't you protected from lawsuits if you're president? You're only protected from lawsuits that are connected to your duties as president. You are not, you are not protected from lawsuits that occur in your private life. But the Supreme Court gave, gave presidents a little bit of protection. Mm -hmm. They said that you're not protected from those lawsuits, but we're going to defer to your schedule while you are president. Well, I hope these cases don't interfere with his TV time and cheeseburger bedtime stories. Although, he might have to start his work day before 11 o'clock. What I'm trying to say is, don't worry, he's free. So now to a final question I need to answer. How do you impeach the president? Now remember, this is the step you take before you can charge the president with crimes. So let's begin. First, we start with the House of Representatives, an entity with 55% Republican control. That's important because to even start this process, you need a simple majority of votes, meaning right off the bat, Democrats are going to have to flip 11 Republican representatives to even get the process started, which good luck with that. Already, it seems that a diet consisting of McDonald's and KFC is more likely of ending the Trump presidency early than the Mueller investigation. Then we go to step two, the Senate, who oversee a trial of the president in order to see whether he should actually be impeached or not. You know, the Senate that is 47% Democrats. Now, for this section of impeachment to go through, you need two-thirds of the vote, which means that 
in addition to flipping those House of Representatives representatives, you now have to also flip 20 Republican senators. Although, there are two independent senators, so you could probably get them. Alright, we've done all of that. Now you're out of there. Now once we've gotten this far... But Nixon resigned before the full House could vote on impeachment. I must put the interests of America first. I shall resign the presidency effective at noon tomorrow. Republican leaders had told him there's no way he'd survive the vote, which helps explain why no president has ever been removed from office by impeachment. All right, so now after all of that, you can bring criminal charges against a president. Although... Pursuant to the pardon power conferred upon me by Article 2, Section 2 of the Constitution, have granted and by these presents do grant a full, free, and absolute pardon unto Richard Nixon. Well, that's not at all suspicious. Um, did the ex-president's number two just let the ex-president off the hook for committing high crimes against the country? Great. So yeah, unless Mike Pence is really, really fed up with the Donald, there's no way you're gonna get a conviction. Anyways, if you want to defend or attack President Trump for impeachment, remember to vote in the midterms. 35 Senate seats and all of the seats in the House of Representatives will be open to change. Anyways, as of now, this is the closest Democrats have gotten to punishing the President. A few months ago it was reported, The U.S. House of Representatives today voted down a resolution to impeach President Trump. Texas Democrat Al Green offered the proposal. He accused the president of promoting bigotry and racism. Most Democrats voted with Republicans to set the resolution aside. Yeah, okay, they set it aside. Oh, don't worry, we'll just put it over here. It'll be nice and safe. Anyways, good luck everyone on getting whatever outcome you want. And as always, that's all I have to say about that. Hey YouTube, if you want to support independent journalism investigating the Supreme Court and the Constitution, subscribe to our YouTube channel for our weekly Supreme Court Saturday episodes. Subscribe now and you can still be in our first 100 subscribers. As always, leave me a comment if you have an important case you think I should research. And thank you for watching.